So generating leads for your company is really, really important. That's number one, pillar number one in my four pillars to exponential software growth. You've got to be able to attract perfect fit leads, but how do you do it? What do you do? What mistakes would you make that would cost you tons of money? I had Jackie Hermes from Excelity on the show and she walks us through exactly what you should and should not do when, when marketing your B2B SaaS company. Check it out. Welcome to Sastery in the Making, the podcast that features the people who made the software world what it is today and the leaders who are shaping the future of technology. Here's your host, Matt Wallach. Yes, welcome. This is Matt and you are listening to Sastery in the Making. I'm really glad to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I am delighted to be joined by my special guest, Jackie Hermes. Jackie, how are you doing? I am wonderful. And the energy you're bringing, top notch. Love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, let me tell everybody about you, Jackie. So Jackie is the founder and CEO of Excelity. Excelity is a digital marketing agency serving a variety of B2B SaaS businesses, which is awesome because that's what I do as well. And you are all probably B2B SaaS people if you're listening to this podcast. They have loads of experience at Excelity and with every single service that they offer. And you know what? They're really experts at tailoring each service to the unique needs of their clients. I love that. And really from planning to execution, they see each project through successful completion. So once again, Jackie, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to dig in. Me too. Me too. So first, tell me, what have you been focusing on lately with your clients? I really want to know. Yeah. I mean, it's been all over the board. It's really interesting. A lot of our clients are finding that Email is less effective than it used to be. I'm sure you're getting more emails than you ever have. I read a study that said something like people got 8 billion more emails in 2020 than they did in 2019. Don't quote wow. me, but it's something like that. And that's, Amazing. I mean, that's insane. It's just people are getting bombarded. So we're going outside of email and trying to figure out what's working. So things we've never done before, um, like we brought in partners to run Facebook ads and IG ads, which working in B2B SaaS, you don't always think of those first. Um, it's been It's been a really interesting learning process. We're doing a lot of new testing and it's really fun. I think that's fantastic. I love that you pivoted and you're wanting to find a way to make sure that your clients are still getting the results. But I want to kind of take a step back now. What gave you the idea to start Excelity? I mean, you guys are doing great and helping a lot of people, but what gave you that initial idea, Jackie? Yeah, I mean, I was managing the marketing department at a SaaS company. And we, while I was there, we grew from, gosh, 40 million when I started to 80 million when I left. And we were private. I know it was crazy. We were private equity owned. We were making lots of acquisitions. We acquired a company that nearly doubled the size of the business that was in a different country and a different vertical. I mean, it was very, very crazy fast paced. And at the same time, I mean, it was like the early years of marketing automation. And we were looking at marketing automation platforms and talking about what that could potentially look like within the company. And I had a number of friends that were running B2B SaaS companies, and they were just at such an insane disadvantage in, in, you know, in comparison to the company that I was working at because they didn't have any of those smart marketing tools. They were a lot smarter. They didn't seem to have access to any of the resources. So it was kind of seemed like a no brainer to me because I already had some of those connections and had some of those conversations. So I started it on the side while I was at Excelity uh, or at Zywave, my bad. Um, I had actually negotiated working four days a week and having Fridays off at, like once I had kids. And so it was a really cool built in kind of time to start building on the side. That's amazing. I love it. I, I hear so many stories that start that way where you had the idea and you kind of started working on the side and then it turned into something amazing. Yeah. So what separates Excelity from other SaaS marketing agencies doing similar stuff? I think we're very different because none of us, there's not a single person on my leadership team that built this company. They've all been with me since the beginning building. None of them worked in an agency previously. So we actually all came from SaaS. And that makes wow. it very different because we all have the experience of working in a SaaS company, of selling the, the products of a SaaS company um, versus the experience of building an agency. So a lot of times when we have new employees come in, they'll be like, oh, well, you know, this is how we did it at the last agency. And it's awesome to 
evaluate all of those suggestions, but it's also like we kind of built this in a different way on purpose to meet the speed that we know these companies need in execution and the efficiency, especially those that are, uh, you know, like on the smaller end of budgets that we try to ladder up. Um, so I think that makes us very different from a lot of agencies. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, having that experience within the SaaS life, I mean, you just, mm -hmm. there's so many learnings that you pick up and soak up and it just becomes part of your blood. I think that's phenomenal that your leadership team has that. And I, 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 it almost feels like just what I'm hearing and what I've seen, and you guys have had some great results. It feels like people, you're, you're kind of like just an extension of the marketing team essentially. And it's, it's, yeah. it, that's, that, I bet that's how it feels for your clients. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, most of our clients have at least one internal marketer, but some of them have just raised like millions of dollars and they have no marketing whatsoever and they don't have wow. a clue what they're doing, right? And they're like, we need a company to do all of this or to give us a strategy. A lot of them are considering hiring internally or they want an agency that's going to work with them to phase the all of the services internally for them and a lot of agencies don't like doing that because it's basically working yourself out of a job but we mm -hmm. that's something we definitely do i think it's extremely valuable now i know a lot of people talk about digital marketing and a lot of my audience is very technical and their founders they often don't know what that means can you just explain for us what is digital marketing when we hear that what is that referring to I kind of hate the term to be honest because it's so <laughs> it's so broad, right? Like like really we were is. chatting before this. When it comes to super broad questions, it's like I want to go deeper into something specific. And that's the same thing with digital marketing is the term is so dang broad because really it could be any marketing that is done on the internet. I mean, it could be like banner ads, it could be Google AdWords, it could be inbound marketing, it could be publishing content. I mean, so it's, true. it's all over the place. And I think we conflate a lot of these terms too, like digital and inbound and demand gen. And does anyone really know what the difference between all of them and what they're doing? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I think it's very true because myself looking for people who to help me in marketing and they just say excellent digital marketer on their resume or on their LinkedIn or whatever. And then I ask them like, so you're able to do all these things? Like, no, I really just focus on SEM. Like, okay, so why don't you just say, so I agree. It yeah. is an extremely broad term. It's very frustrating. I, I want to, so, so have you had to educate your, your clients and your market on, Hey, this is what it really means. This is what's important. This is where you should be focusing. I think every single agency has to do that. And that's a huge part of the sales process because a lot of times uh, founders, founders especially, and I mean, even internal marketing teams, they come in with what they think might work or what they've seen other people do or what they've tried versus what might actually work for them. You know, so it's a process of like, working backward from their goals and understanding where they're really trying to get and whether we fit in with what their goal is and then educating them on how we would approach getting there and how we've done it for other clients. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So let's say you're working with a client. How do you decide what's most important for a particular company in a particular market? How do you figure out, okay, this is the way we need to go? Yeah, I mean, I think it completely depends what their goal is. Like we we have a current client that we just um, replied to an RFP for a company that they're spinning out and their goal for their current company and the goal for the company that they're spinning out are completely different. The current current wow. company already has recognition in their market. People know pretty well who they are. And we've been working with them for a few years. The new one is not a regional company, it's a national company. So it's gonna be awareness activities, but then also a lot of companies wanna be able to tie dollars to marketing, which sometimes works and sometimes leads to like false attribution and bickering and I'm sure all the things that you know about. So it completely depends on what the goals are. And we look at every single one of their goals and then say, how might we be able to get there? So I was just talking about Facebook ads. We were looking at one of our clients today that runs a webinar series as a method to get people into their funnel can be super effective. They were running LinkedIn ads, um, the cost per click and the cost to get people converted onto a webinar on LinkedIn is really expensive. So it's like, it you know, what is 
does this fit the budget? Are we getting the right people in through this strategy? Should we try something else? So it's completely a case by case basis. Sometimes we're working off of knowledge of stuff we've already done. And sometimes we're like, hey, you know, we'd like to try something we haven't done before. Do you want to partner on this? Um, and often when we do that, we'll run those strategies on our company and on the client's company at the same time, which is really fun. Oh, I love that. So when you're testing new stuff, you test it yourself, you test it with them and you kind of partner to figure out what the best way is. Is that how you're doing it? Yeah, we usually have a few clients that are willing to be like our guinea pigs, you know, the ones that have worked with us for a few years that are like, oh yeah, you know, like we trust you, you can test this. And then of course we'll give them like, hey, we'll give you a little bit more budget this month to do it, or we'll kick in for the ad spend or whatever it may be to make the testing lucrative for them. But it's also a really cool way to upsell clients as well as they grow with you. So, and it's really fun. I mean, we try to make ourselves our own best case study and we're always trying random new things. I think that's phenomenal. So I want to understand, you mentioned something before. I want to set I want to figure out where you land on this. Sometimes people want to tie marketing to revenue. Sometimes people want to look at more leading indicators like leads and, and what's being generated. Where where are you looking to track the the results for what you're doing? Well, most of the clients we work with are selling an enterprise product. So it's difficult. It's ideal, I think, always to be able to tie marketing to dollars because it's a really freaking easy sale or renewal when you can say, look, you made this amount, you spent this amount, no brainer for you. But it's not always that easy, right? So I mean, we do try to tie it to leads, but it's also, I think people look at that process wrong where they're just trying to like, all right, let's generate leads. Let's hit people with middle or bottom of funnel content ads and, you know, get some contacts in the door. And it's like, in an enterprise sale, it's a lot more about quality than it is about quantity. And a lot of mm -hmm. times there's a lot of steps in between, right? So, uh, I mean, sometimes we look at it in awareness generation, in partnerships that they're able to form within their industry and leads and dollars. Um, again, it all ties back to that client's goals and really what they're looking to achieve. Just hearing you talk is just perfect, you know, reason of why you want an expert. For everybody out there, a lot of times, and myself, when I started my SaaS companies, we would be like, oh, we just need a bunch of leads and let's close them. And there are a lot of steps in between. And that's what we coach in our programs is, hey, we're trying to get people through the funnel and get them to the next steps. And you have to understand that there's a tactic, there's strategies at each step. And hearing you talk about it just, just reminds me that there's a lot of people who don't understand that and don't think that way. So mm -hmm. do you, do you, sometimes need to uh, maybe even sometimes, maybe not forcefully, but just really sternly remind your your clients that, hey, we've got to go through these processes. We've got to have a strategy for every different piece of the funnel. Do you, do you get into that? We do. And it's, I think that a lot of founders especially are like, get to the result. They don't want to go through the process of, you know, like laying the foundation and the upfront planning. I mean, a lot, a lot of agencies, it takes months to do that upfront planning. And when you're working with SaaS companies, especially, and a lot of ours are uh, investor owned or they're private equity owned or they're VC backed, they don't want to spend, you know, two or three months planning and then another month or two executing. And then maybe in six months they see results. So mm -hmm. we kind of look at it as a process of like, how can we get where we're going as quickly as possible while laying that foundation? A lot of part of our onboarding is looking for quick wins. So like, is there, if the company has been around for a while, is there a lost ops campaign that we can run? Do they have a like top prospect list that we could hit um, on a like more ABM basis? So we're often looking for like, you know, we want to wow them a little bit up front while we're kind of laying that foundation because we, I mean, we led our onboarding get away from us but it just kept getting longer because we kept finding that we wanted more things right and we're like more mm -hmm. strategy of course everyone's really excited about that on our side and then the founders and the teams are like this is taking way too long um you know and so it's like we had to find a way to meet in the middle there it's been a fun process it's something that we've been working on recently oh i'm sure it sounds very iterative it sounds like your process you're trying to provide more value more stuff and you started to realize hey it's kind of getting away from what our end result is so I love a couple of times I've already heard you say you've pivoted, you've adjusted, you've been agile to continue to get your company where it needs to be to serve 
your clients. It sounds like that's mm -hmm. something that's really core within your philosophies. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's good or bad. My entire leadership team looks at everything we do with a critical eye. I think it's bad and that we're super hard on ourselves. Um, and then sometimes we take a step back and we're like, holy crap, look at what we've built, you know, and we, and look at all of the clients that are really happy with us. I think it can be really easy to get caught up in the day to day of like, oh, I want this to be perfect. And that actually detracts from the progress that you can make. So we are always iterating. It's this delicate balance between trying not to give our team whiplash of like, you know, we're trying these new things and also making sure that we are ahead of the curve. We don't want to be a marketing agency, especially working with SaaS companies. That's like five years behind. I don't think that we would be in business if we if we stayed like that way. I completely agree. So I want to understand a lot of companies I work with, they struggle with marketing and you know, they just have a tough time. They sometimes don't grasp, they don't know what they should be doing. What are you seeing are some of the biggest mistakes being made by SaaS founders and SaaS leaders in regards to marketing? Yeah. Well, I just ran a webinar called Five Marketing Mistakes You're Making. So just oh, perfect time. Let man. me run through them. <laughs> um, I mean, I I went through mistakes in like every single stage of marketing. So a few of them. I would say one is I see a lot of crappy websites and most companies that have crappy websites don't think they're crappy. They might look mm -hmm. nice, but they're full of jargon. People are bouncing really quickly because what they see doesn't make sense. It doesn't clearly state who they are, who they serve, the problems they're solving. Um, I see websites that you have to click through like three pages in order to talk to anyone. And it's like, mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense. And mm -hmm. frankly, I am the ultimate litmus test because my attention span is so short that people will, you know, like they'll send me client work and be like, you know, like, how long would you stay on this page? Or does this make sense to you? Because I'm a, I'll skim it. And if I can figure out what to do next, great. And if not, I'm going to bounce. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's a big mistake people make. We also talked a lot about social media. I think uh, community management used to be a big B2C thing, and now it's becoming a B2B thing, which it probably should have been in the first place. But a lot of B2B companies have been like scheduling their content out and just like letting it fly and not really doing the like community building aspect of it. And that's something that the clients that have budget, we try to convince them to do most certainly. Um, and some of our clients are even getting a little bit more into personal branding, which has been very fun. And that's something that I Good. do for our, our company as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I completely believe in the whole personal brand. And I mean, you look at uh, some of the stuff that's already out there. Tesla has 9 million followers on Twitter, but Elon Musk has 60 million. Uh, mm -hmm. People want to connect with people. So you're helping your clients with their personal branding too? Um, we're not doing as much of that work. I don't think that most of our clients want to pay us to run their marketing and then run a personal brand too. And a lot of them are still not convinced of the value or maybe it's not, not being convinced because I think even like looking at my LinkedIn, I can make a pretty strong case for how you can, you know, run and grow a company off of a LinkedIn or off of a personal brand, even just on one platform. Okay. Um, yep. yeah, I mean, and I think it's easy to make that case, but no, we're not doing as much of that for our clients, but we are advising them on what they could do and what they should try. But man, you have to be consistent. You have to be willing mm -hmm. to dedicate the time. You have to get in there and interact, respond to all the comments and like really make connections. So, I mean, it's a time intensive process, but it's worth it. I completely agree. So. What would you say is some good advice we can give to software leaders who are trying to scale their company and trying to make sure that marketing is a big piece of that? Hmm. That is a great question. I would say the team that you have is everything and quit trying to hire unicorns that can do everything that a lot of companies make that mistake. And they're like, oh, we have one person that can do SEO, copy, design, they're going to manage our website. And it's like, there's no one person that's really good at all of that. And I think mm -hmm. hiring a jack of all trades, um, but a master of none is a mistake. And I see a lot of companies doing that up front and then being like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe they can't actually do all of these things. Yeah. And I would say, even if they're decent at them, just the focus alone, like each of those is almost a full-time job in even small companies and definitely a full-time job or more in the yeah. larger companies. So 
I mean, even if they are really good at several things, it's going to be hard for them to really, like you said, just before on the personal brand side, just managing social media, you got to be really consistent to grow that. I mean, when I grew my LinkedIn, we grew a ton, but I was on that thing for hours every day and mm -hmm. it worked great in the end, but man, it's, it's definitely a commitment. So I totally agree that Jack of all trades thing sounds great, but can be really, really tough to execute in the real world. It can. And it just slows everything down too. you know, like even if you don't want to pay an agency, which a lot of companies don't at first, agencies can be expensive to work with, of course, um, but getting someone in that can do pieces of that. And then even having like a outsourced freelance team or whatever you need to do to build it. But I just think putting the entire strategy execution and analysis on one person is the wrong move. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I would agree. So this has been awesome, Jackie. I've loved being, uh, hearing your take and, and what your thoughts are around marketing and helping SaaS companies grow. How can our audience learn more about you and Excelity? Yes. Well, I am very, I'm still on LinkedIn for hours a day. So I, anytime I have a little gap in between meetings, I'm like, Ooh, what's happening on LinkedIn. So <laughs> surprisingly, my inbox is pretty clean and you can hit me up there. That's probably the best place to reach me. Okay, perfect. And we will put all of that into the show notes if you're listening on the podcast and down below in the YouTube description if you're watching the show. But Jackie, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yes, this was awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it too. You're welcome. Likewise. For everybody else out there, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribing. We have great leaders like Jackie coming on every single week. We're wanting to make sure to get you the best possible stuff. So subscribe. Make sure you like and comment and we'll get you all of this awesome content. Thank you for coming and we will see you next time. Take care.